Hey, Gray City, so glad to be with you on this online experience. We've got a lot of things coming up for you. Uh, we're gonna have some opportunity to worship together. We'll be in a series and hearing from one of our pastors, and then you'll be able to grab maybe your favorite beverage or whatever will allow you to get into a worshipful posture. In the meantime, uh, why don't you go ahead and check us out at wearegrace.city so that you can learn more about our church and next steps that you can take here as well. And so go ahead and get ready. We're about to start worship. All right, everyone. Please stand up. <laughs> Don't forget the wonder of how you brought Cause you said As you stepped into my Egypt And you took me by the hand And you marched me out in freedom Into the promised land And now I will not forget you And I'll sing of all you've done Death is followed up forever By the fury of your love you stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom, into the promised land, now I will not forget you, and I'll sing of all you've done, death is swallowed up forever, by the fury of your love.
preventing us to be closer to you. That your name, Jesus, is bigger and it's better and it's more powerful than anything that we may face. So Father, we just declare your name over ourselves, over our families, over this community, over this family, over Sorrento, over Lake County. Jesus, that you would be here, that you would be present, that you would be breaking chains, that you would be healing hearts, that you would be bridging gaps, healing and restoring relationships, healing and restoring mental health, healing and restoring damage that we continue to do to ourselves these cycles that we can't break, Father, that you are here and you are present with us and that your name is powerful enough to break whatever we may be facing. Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys can be seated.
Well, good morning, Great City. Yeah, we're so excited. Guess what? We are in summertime, and we might be making waves, but we're really, really excited because our kids' ministry, Great City Kids, is going to be hosting Kids Camp in just a couple months, August 1st, and so they're going to be making waves. We're pumped. Uh, kindergarten from fifth graders, if you have a kiddo uh, or you know a kiddo that would like to be part of it, it is a free awesome camp, one week long, 6 to 8 p.m. It is going to be awesome. So you can sign up uh, in the lobby today. There's uh, an area there where you can you can sit and take a picture and pretend that you're at the beach today even. Uh, it's going to be amazing, but we would love for you to be able to sign up your kiddos. Uh, some awesome things happening this week too. All summer long for students, middle school and high school, we have summer nights. And so last week we kicked that off. It was so much fun. Um, it's an opportunity to be able to meet on Wednesdays and it's, uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have the address for you right up here if you want to take a snapshot of that and just zoom in and you'll see it every sun or every Wednesday at six to eight and so bathing suits awesomeness it's a good time um, we would love to see you there and this Saturday we're gonna have a late day for our students too at the Verkikes house and so it's snapshot that you can get the address you can find out more in the lobby as well starts at 10 a.m. until you get a sunburn and then apply more sunscreen and jam some more. So it'll be a good time. But I think it stops at 2 p.m. or until the party stops. And so it's a good time for all middle school and high school students this Saturday. Come and have a good time. Um, and then now we've got a brand new series kicking off this week. And so it's going to be awesome to get ready with your notes. You want to get all that information because it's a mini series. It's only two weeks long. So it's compact. So you want to jam it in today. Got yeah? All right, awesome. We're going to stand up and we're going to burn some calories. Say hi to your neighbor with a hug, high fi yo, or a bow, or just, just a little nudge on the forehead. Just hello. Good morning, church family. It is so good to be with you this morning. How are you doing? Good. Um, real quick, I, uh, I wasn't planning on sharing this, um, but in my Bible, um, I usually put a place marker uh, for Sunday morning. There's two that I usually use. Um, one of them is the um, program from my old pastor's uh, funeral a couple of years ago. Um, the other one um, is a note that one of um, our kiddos here, one of our Grace City kiddos, gave me um, this past Advent season, and it said, Thank, and it's her prayer, um, and I love it. And I shared this a couple months ago, but it just, I stopped and I read it as I came up. Thank you, God, and his son for gathering us here to worship you with the hope of a good day and good songs and to be happy about what we have. Amen. I love that. I, I love that so much. Um, and so I keep that in my Bible as a as a little marker. Um, if you're with, uh, uh, if you want to follow along this morning, we're going to be in the book of Habakkuk. Um, Habakkuk. And if you are here this morning and you're like, I've never heard of Habakkuk, and are you feeling okay? That's a little phlegmy. It's okay. You're in good company. In fact, if you're trying to turn there in your Bible and you're kind of trying to do the, like, okay, sneak to the front table of contents, how do you spell that again? How many K's are in Habakkuk? Um, if you feel like, like it looks like somebody fell asleep on their keyboard and sent it, or your five-year-old got a hold of your phone. And um, yeah, uh, Habakkuk, and here's what I want to do while you're turning there, while you're getting ready, is um, just go ahead and acknowledge something, is that yes, we live in a very messed up world. And if you've been feeling it, you're like, you're looking around like, this world's crazy. Like, everything's kind of a mess right now. Like, if you're feeling that, it's okay. If you're feeling like, hey, what are you talking about? Everything is great right now. And maybe you're feeling that because, you know, you're watching Obi-Wan or Top Gun. Maybe you hit the beach or the pool this week. 
um, or you have plans that are a vacation coming up, that's fine. But if you're like that overarching kind of sense, that feeling in your gut that like, oh, man, the world's just a mess. Um, it's okay. It's okay. If you're feeling that, it's okay. In case you, you forgot, let me just give you a couple things that might be stressors like in the back kind of hovering over. Um, just, just a couple. This was off the top of my head and it took me about 10 seconds. Uh, gas prices, um, shootings, COVID, or actually, I guess that's like so 2020. Um, now it's monkey pox or something like, okay, whatever that is. Um, baby formula seems to be running out. Uh, there's a crisis there. Uh, Supreme Court stuff going on. Uh, church scandals, in case you missed that. That was a great one. Um, I don't know if you um, caught with the uh, SBC. Um, I grew up, this, I'm not picking on SBC. I grew up in, my dad was a Baptist pastor for decades. Um, people that he looked up to and my mom have looked up to for decades in the news with scandals um, in and sex abuse scandals that is just heartbreaking and has really rocked even my own family, my family origin. Um, the, the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard trial, you guys okay? <laughs> it's okay. I know we won't do a show of hands, but I know some of you have been watching that. Like, all right? um, and you have a lot of feelings about it, like, right? Um, elections. Um, and uh, what's going on in politics has just got you so worn out. I mean, we're only in primaries. We haven't even hit, like, the... the ugh, okay, that's coming out. Stock markets, if, you're, if you have a lot and, and you're watching, like, every day and going, oh, okay, um, if that's you. Like, if you feel like there's just a lot, and the world's a mess, and that's not even getting started, like, on an international level. Like, you remember Ukraine? Like... In Russia, like there's, there's stuff just, or threats from China, or whatever it is, and you're just kind of like, man, there's so much, and this world is just messed up. I mean, like, it's like the Great Potato Famine of 1840, like all over again, right? Like, that was for you. You're welcome. I want to give you something happy before we read Habakkuk. Are you ready? I saw this article. Made me think of y'all. Um, article, you got the article? There's an article. There's a screenshot. It just disappeared. This is, the, this is a picture. Screenshot. It's not working. The mouse just decided to die. Okay, well, we'll just stay on this happy picture for the rest of the... <laughs> we'll bring some, some joy into the... Well, anyway, I saw an article. Does that mean you can show the clip? <laughs> Maybe not. This is awesome. I'm going to have to, oh, that's neat. <laughs> Improvements. <laughs> cool. Okay. So um, I saw this article, and the, the, head, the heading of the article was, was this. It was, this was, it was that a deer was pronking, a deer was pronking, and the article says, take a look at this video. It is guaranteed to make you smile. So I worked really hard to find something to make you smile this morning, and now I can't. <laughs> But if I can just uh, um, reenact what a deer pronking looks like, <laughs> maybe that'll salvage this moment of deer pronking and happiness and joy. So a deer pronking, if you've ever seen this, like, you know, you've seen like the deer prancing and you've seen like the, the deer um, and the headlight stuff. Like you've seen that face, right? You may have looked, I don't know if you've ever been and seen like a deer in your backyard, but a deer pronking is that weird thing that they do when, this, I'm okay. <laughs> when they like jump and then like all fours, they're all just kind of like, <laughs> that just, I feel like you're, you're wanting this to happen right now, the guys, but they just sound like, <laughs> like that. That's the closest I can get to pronking because... <laughs> Because God did not create or intend for me to pronk. <laughs> and now you know what pronking is. But you know what I'm talking about. You may have seen footage of this, and you're like, that's kind of a weird maneuver. Like, why, why does the deer do that? I, I, I'm curious. I'm a curious person, so I started doing a little bit of research. And they're like, sometimes it seems like they, maybe they're doing it even when a predator comes, which is kind of confusing. And that's, that's some like behavioral, animal behaviors are like, that's actually part of what they're doing with the predator. Predators come to eat them, they're like, oh, Yeah. Like, like, what is that? Um, something like, like it, and, it's, and it reminds me of uh, the scene from Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Ronan's about to blow everything up, and Star-Lord, Chris Pratt's like, 
Ooh, child, things are gonna get easy. Listen to these words. Ooh, child, think, dance off, bro. Someday, things, and he just goes off, right? And, and Ronan's like, what is going on? And it just confuses him. Well, some behavior, man, I'm out of breath already. Some behavioral psychologist, or uh, animal behaviorist, excuse me, think that that's part of what's going on. Some, because it's like, hey, if you want to get a girl's attention, you know how to do it. <laughs> like, maybe it's that. And some, just because for pure joy, just for pure joy. And so there's a really great clip that would be showing right now of a deer pronking, but instead you got the exquisite joy of seeing me pronk. That's going to be trending for all the wrong reasons. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 1. Well, we should pray. Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus, thank you for, for who you are, for what you've done, for what you're doing. Uh, thank you for laughter and joy, even the joy of a deer bouncing around. Um, God, thank you for all the, uh, the many blessings that we have that sometimes we forget about, um, just in the cloudiness and the craziness of this life. Um, and God, as we jump into your word this morning, um, I pray that we would be shaped by it. There's so many loud voices. There's so much going on. And if we can just turn off the news channels for a second and turn the volume up and turn our ears towards your your still small voice whispering in our ear uh, to be shaped by you, by your word. <laughs> and even the joy of that, God. Um, to be shaped by you and your word, Lord. We ask this in your name we pray. Amen. Habakkuk chapter one, <laughs> verse one. Habakkuk chapter one, verse one. It says, the prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. That's how it starts out. And Habakkuk's an interesting um, name. We don't know a whole lot about this guy. We, we don't know a whole lot about him at all. We've got a little bit of uh, extra biblical Jewish lore that says um, certain things about him. Uh, from best we can tell, he's a, a contemporary of uh, Nahum and Zephaniah. Um, he's prophesying, and he's, what prophesying means he's speaking God's truth. He's doing that somewhere around 600 years actually before Jesus, 600 B.C.-ish. Um, and, and what's happened is that God's people, the, uh, um, Israel, this nation of Israel is already, you had this great King David, you had Solomon, and Solomon's kids, the, the country, the nation actually splits um, into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. So there's a civil war that, that has happened. And then now Israel's been kind of carried off into captivity, into slavery, and Judah is, you think like, oh, they must be well, doing great. They had Josiah, who was an awesome king. He was really great, loved God. But then as, as it continued on, the next guy's after him, not so much. Um, in fact, there's a lot of evil going on. And so Habakkuk's this prophet. This guy, he sits back and he sees this whole thing. Now, Habakkuk's name um, means this. It means hug. It means to hug. It's the Hebrew word for a hug, for an embrace, uh, for when... Um, when uh, you see the, the, the child that's um, crying tears, uh, um, overwhelmed with emotion, and you just come up and you put your arms out, and they just like throw the arm, and they give you that big hug that they just find their safety and security there, right? It's, and Habakkuk's name means that. It's this embrace, this super hug, not just affection, but like, like the simplest form of security and shelter of, another, of somebody else providing that warm embrace towards you. And then the word for prophecy there in Habakkuk 1.1, the word for prophecy literally means it's the Hebrew word for burden. It's this thing that he's carrying. Um, it's the message that he's carrying, and it's a heavy load. It's, there's lots of words um, for prophecy, but the word used here that we, we're translating in our English Bible prophecy, it's this heavy burden and load that he's carrying. Now, uh, Nahum, um, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Nahum and Zephaniah, when they start their prophecies out, it's like, hey, my name is this, and here's what God's saying, and go into it. But Habakkuk's different. What we have here, in the, especially uh, at the beginning, is you have Habakkuk's conversation with God. And it starts there. God's going to speak, but it, you have, where is his head at and where is his heart at? Um, in verse uh, 2, here's what he says. Here's Habakkuk's complaint. How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you don't listen. Or cry out to you, violence. 
but you don't save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There's strife and conflict abounds. Now, therefore, the law is paralyzed. The justice, injustice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. I mean, you can see that it, it feels like, when was he writing this? It wasn't in 2022. I mean, you ever feel a little bit like, like, God, where are you at? How long, God, are you going to let this stuff go on? I'm looking around my country. I'm looking around my nation. I'm looking around my people, God. And here's what I see. Um, I see violence in the streets or in schools or in hospitals. I see injustice. It feels like, like whether it's government or whether it's religious leaders, there's corruption. It feels like everywhere. And no, but nobody can be trusted. God, why do you just let this go on? Destruction and violence are reformed. Uh, conflict abounds. There's just fighting everywhere. And, and it doesn't seem like, like the like good people, the, the one, it doesn't seem like they're really prospering. It seems like all these evil things. Are like, what, God, why are you letting this go on? And it's like his question is this. If you are really there, God, and you are really good, why don't you fix this? God, if you're really there, and if you're really good, then why don't you fix this? Why do you let, now he's saying this about who? He's saying this that when he looks around. He's not talking about the rest of the nations. He's saying, why? I mean, like, we're supposed to be God's people. We're supposed to be God's chosen country here, this, this nation. And, um, and it's a mess. We've had uh, uh, fighting everywhere. It seems like, God, why don't you do something about this? Um, Bruce Bickle. Uh, so this, it's precisely because God loves us and wants us to freely love him back that evil exists. I mean, somebody asked me this last week after the service, can, like, I, I mean, I think I know this, but I've, I've got a friend, and every time we start talking about faith in God, he's like, how do you believe in a good God when you have all this evil in the world? If your God is good, and if your God is powerful, then why all this? And Bickle says, no, the reason that evil exists is because God is good. Because God loves us and gives us one of the craziest gifts. Not only does he give us life, he gives us free will, this ability to choose. All the way back, you go, the, the scripture started out all the way back in Genesis. It's like, here's the apple. Are you going to trust me or are you not going to trust me? And, and he gives us that choice because love isn't love if it's forced. And God, uh, one of my professors back in uh, my undergrad used to say, God is the ultimate gentleman. He's, he will never force himself on anyone. Like God, God is gracious and he's patient. Um, 2 Peter 3, 9, the, uh, Peter says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to repent. And that's God. He's like patiently waiting for people to repent. It's not that he doesn't keep his promises. He's just being patient because he wants people to turn to him. Uh, Philip Yancey said that this world is spoiled by evil and suffering, that this world, that this messed up world we live in, spoiled by, by evil and suffering still exists, is an example of God's mercy, not his cruelty. And it's like God, God allows and he's waiting patiently. See, here's the truth um, that, that Habakkuk's about to find out and God's gonna give him a response. And if you've ever stressed this, wondered this, here's the truth that he's about to find out is Habakkuk, you're not God. God's gonna give him some answers. He's like, look, he's God, you're not. So he does things his way and in his time. And that's a hard thing, you're like, huh, well, how can I trust that? That's the point. Do you trust God? So, Isaiah 55, 8. My thoughts are not like your thoughts, says the Lord. My ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. And God answers Habakkuk, verse 5. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. Check this out. God speaking. This is the Lord's answer. Look at the nations and watch. Get, like, step back. See this whole big picture. Be amazed. Be shocked. For I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe. Oh, wow, that sounds awesome. Like, this is the God that's like parted seas and stuff. Like, like okay, 
All right, I see you, God. What, what kind of awesome thing you got cooking up? He's like, God says, here, I, I'm doing something in your days you're not going to believe. Even if you were told, even if I told you what's going to happen, you're going to have trouble believing this. All right, God, give it to me, give it to me. And God says, I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are feared and dreaded people. They are law to themselves and promote their own honor. And then for the next several verses, what he says, God says is, hey, yeah, you want to know what I'm up to? Here's what I'm up to. You're like, how come, God, you don't well, you allow all this? It's like, like, I'm going to do something amazing. You want to hear what this amazing thing is? I'm going to let the Babylonians come in, and they're just going to sweep the entire country out. People are, people are going to um, die, and people are going to be carried off into slavery. And the descriptions that even God uses, like this ruthless people. And Habakkuk's like, okay, now what? Habakkuk steps back, and he's like, no, God, that, that can't be. I mean, think about this for a second. This is what it would feel like, Right? Habakkuk was likely um, like worked in the temple, this prophet, temple prophet. He's, he's, he's the church staff somewhere. He's like, God, why do you allow all this to happen in our country? Our country's a mess. And he hears the word from God and God's answer is, oh, don't worry. Iraq's gonna come and sweep you all out. By the way, Babylon, modern day, Iraq. Babylon, the city of Babylon was only a, a, a less than a day's journey from, from Baghdad. It'd be like God saying that, and you're like, whoa, God, that can't be the answer that you got. Tell me, tell me like, okay, that's not true. And God's like, I told you you wouldn't believe it. I mean, it's a hard thing pill to swallow, isn't it? Look at the nations and watch, be utterly amazed. Habakkuk responds, and he sits there, and he's like, not so, God, not so, God. In verse 15, he says, the wicked foe, these Babylonians, all of them, um, he, he pulls all their enemies up. Ba the Babylonians, they just come, and they pull them up with, like, hooks. He catches them in the net. He gathers them like a dragnet. He rejoices and is glad. He sacrifices his net um, to his, for by his net, he lives in luxury and enjoys the choicest food. And Habakkuk's like, how in the world is that your answer that people even more messed up, people even more evil, the, I'm sorry, the Babylonians, they come in and they just like, uh, we're fish in a barrel is what he says. And they're gonna, he's gonna fillet us. The king of Babylon is gonna fillet us like fish, like the McDonald's sandwich. And they love to come in and they destroy everything and then they just live off of, of our stuff and off of other people. They just take it and they get rich off of killing and murdering and enslaving people. That's your answer, God? Is you're gonna let that happen? Um, Tom Meyer uh, says, both written and visual records from the ancient Near East demonstrate that the biblical prophets were not exaggerating about the grisly nature of their enemies like the Babylonians. Um, this includes the dismembering, um, mainly hand amputations, uh, skinning, decapitating, and impaling and burning of their victims. That's what they do. So in back, it's like, whoa. You're, I'm, I'm sorry, we're fishing a barrel. You're gonna let them come in and just do that to us? Chapter two, verse one. Habakkuk says, I will stand at my watch. I'll station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I'm, I am to give to this complaint. Like, I'm just gonna sit here. God, there's no way. And I'm gonna wait until you give me a better answer than that. Please tell me there's another answer. And then God responds again. Chapter two, verse uh, two. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Um, pause really quickly there. Um, not the best translation. Scholars are pretty uh, strongly in agreement that, no offense to the NIV here, but that's not the best translation. What it says there is God says, write it on really big letters so that even if somebody is running by, they can see it. Like put this sucker up on a billboard. Like when the messengers are running really, really fast and they look up, they don't have to stop. They can see this message clearly. And if you're running really fast through life and you don't slow down much, 
I hope this morning, like, like put the big billboard up of here's what God says. And I hope everybody sees it, God says. Like, make it really big, big letters so everybody can see it. Verse three, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, God goes on and he also says, he's like, look, not only are my people, are, they, are there consequences for the evil? Yes, and I'll fix it. And then the other nations, I'm gonna fix that too. And there'll be consequences there. And, and I'll take care of the justice. Wait patiently, because I'll do it in my time, not yours. And I'll do it my way, not yours. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Verse four, and this is the key verse in the entire book. It's only a three-chapter book. And as you can see, we're not gonna read every verse, but we're gonna look at the kind of the big picture of the chapter or the, of the book for a minute. And this is the exact centerpiece. This is the verse that's lifted out. This is the verse that when we think of, or you hear a verse from Habakkuk, you're like, oh, it's that verse. It's repeated multiple times in the New Testament. It's quoted by New Testament writers. And, he, and God says this. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not right, but the righteous will live by his faith. Or depending on your translation, faithfulness. It's like there's some people that they, they live and it's all trusting in themselves and they're all proud and they're all arrogant and they're, and they're, they're kind of crooked in the way they do that and they trust in themselves. But the just, the righteous, but the just will live by faith. The righteous will live by his faithfulness. And you're saying, wait a minute, you're using both of those words. Don't they mean something totally different, faith and faithfulness? No. The Hebrew word for faith and faithfulness is the exact same word. It's just one word. It's uh, the Hebrew word amuna. Amuna. The first time you see it in scripture is all the way back in the book of Exodus. And there's this battle going on and Joshua is down. He's on the battlefield against the Amalekites. But Moses is up on the mountain. He's got a whole different, he can see the whole thing. And Moses is up on the mountain. And as long as he keeps his hands lifted up, the battle is won. They're experiencing victory. But as soon as he lets his hands go down, they start losing. Now you and I'd be like, Moses, and, he, and it's not just him. He's got Aaron and he's got her. He's got her, which is a dude, but his name's her. I know it's confusing. He's got these two guys with him up there and you're like, shouldn't they be like grabbing weapons and like battling it out? And God's like, no, no, no. As long as your hands stay up, you're experiencing victory. As soon as you let your hands down, Mm -mm. And Moses gets tired, and so he's sitting there, he's like trying to keep his hands up, and his buddies are holding his hands up, because sometimes it's hard to keep your hands up, isn't it? And they're holding his hands up, and the word to describe the consistent holding up of his hands is the first time you see the word in Scripture, amuna, and it means faith or faithfulness. It's that steady, this. Faith and faithfulness. See, faith and faithfulness are the same word in Hebrew because there is no one without the other. It's the consistent trust in God that dictates how I live in my actions. It's this, it's this um, uh, actually, this is amazing. Um, our word, amen. You know how we always throw that little word on the end of a prayer? You ever wonder what that means? Like, why do we say amen? What does that word mean? It comes from that same Hebrew root, amuna. It's like, yes, an agreement confirmed with you. Boom, exclamation point. Yet yeah, that, that's what amen means. So when we get done praying, we're like, it's like a, um, a Captain Picard, make it so, right? Like, sorry, Star Trek reference. There's a lot of Star Wars references, so we gotta, you know. It's, it's, it's this amen, yes, amen to that. And what the word means, though, when the just will live by his faith or his faithfulness, it's like let your trust in God so radically inform and shape your life that your whole life is an amen to that trust, to that awesome God that you serve. My whole life being an amen to that, an amen to this awesome God that I serve. Hey. Here's the question. 
that God says right here, Habakkuk 2, 4, look, there are some people that they trust themselves and they're all puffed up, they're all arrogant. But the just, the righteous, their life, they'll live by faith, by faithfulness. Their whole life will be a trust in me and an amen written across time and space, written across their entire life. What God's asking is, do you trust me? Do you trust me? And second, does your life show it? Do you trust me? And does your life show it? Maybe a different way we could say it would be that simply this. Are your hands still lifted? Habakkuk's like, yeah, don't you see all the stuff that's going on, though? And God's like, yeah, but are your hands still lifted up? Are you still trusting me? Romans 1, 16 and 17 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God. It brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentiles, from the gospel of righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Your whole, your, this good news is all about simply what? Trusting God and living it out, living a life of trust and response, trusting him so much that my whole life is thrown on. Um, the Greek word for believe you don't believe, I, I love this in my Greek class, you don't believe in something in, in a biblical way, you believe into something. It's like, nope, I'm totally relocated. <laughs> I've moved. My feet are moved. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. And then he goes on, Paul goes on and quotes Habakkuk and he says, why? Because that's how we live. Because the just will live by faith. Because the righteous will live by faith. So, God continues on in the rest of chapter two. He's like, don't worry, I got this. I got this. I'm gonna take care of all the nations. Justice will happen. I'm being patient. It's not in your time. And the reason I'm being patient is to give people an opportunity to turn back. Don't worry, I got this. It's gonna be my way and my time, but I got this. And then chapter three, you get Habakkuk's response. We're not gonna read all the verses. I'm just gonna highlight a couple of them. And the heading over chapter three is Habakkuk's prayer, if you're reading your Bible. And it's a prayer of Habakkuk, verse one, the prophet, on Shagayanoth. If you're like me, the first thing you see when you see that is like, what in the world does Shagayanoth mean? We're not completely sure. Now, most of your... Um, if you pull up a Bible dictionary or a commentary or whatever, uh, they're not completely sure. They think it might be a literary or a musical term. Thank you. Not that you said anything, but <laughs> I think it might be a musical term. But most consensus is that it's somewhere between a lament, um, like just a sad song, a depressed song, but more intense than that. It's not just like sad. It's the, the root word it means to be like really shooken up and from a, um, it, they believe it refers to like something without, like a song that it doesn't rhyme very well and it's just kind of more of a ranty song and it doesn't mix really. And you're like, huh? It's, this is what Shagayanoth looks like. Like this. It's like, ah! That. If you're like, what in the world is Shagayanoth mean? Something like that. Somewhere between depressed but really amped up about it. Like that, when the whole world, so here's Habakkuk's prayer, when the whole world is Shagayanoth, okay? Root word Shaga. Lord, verse two, I've heard of your fame. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk does two things. He looks back and he looks up. God, you've been good. I remember all the things that you've done. And I don't understand this. I don't have, I've got some details and you, you might not get it, even as many answers as Habakkuk gets. But here's what I know is that you are a good God And 
and he turns it into, I'm in awe of who you are, God. I'm praying to you. And he turns the space to a place of worship and prayer. He looks back and he remembers, and then he turns to worship and prayer. He looks back, and then he looks up. He remembers, he worships, and prays. And do you remember how this book started back in chapter one? What was his first thing he said was, how long, Lord, must I call for your help? Chapter one, verse two. Um, But you don't listen. How long? Like, God, when are you gonna do something? And then um, I cry out to you violence, but you don't save. Like, how long, God, and are you gonna save? Those are the two things that he starts right out of the gate with. Remember that? Listen to how his prayer ends in chapter three. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Not only are you gonna allow this to happen, but you're actually gonna fix that too. Like my heart was pounding, my lips were quivering. He's aware I'm probably gonna die through this. And some of my, maybe my family members and friends, or maybe they'll be carried off, the the nation's invading. But here's what I know. I'm gonna wait patiently. How long, O Lord, to, I'm gonna wait patiently for God to do what God does. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Verse 17, though the fig tree does not bud, and there's no grapes on the vines. Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Let me, can I go back there for a second? What does he say? Though the fig tree doesn't bud, there are no grapes on the vines. Though the olive crop fails, the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls. Though the gas prices go up, though the shelves at the store are empty. Though I'm not sure about the next election. Though the the scandals keep coming. Though the countries around the world, I'm just waiting for them to push the red button. Though the murder hornets and chicken pox, monkey pox, I don't know where that came from. No matter... Though this happens and that happens, I'm going to wait patiently, God, and I'm actually going to rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my, um, can you throw this up for a second? I want you to read this word, um, 318. Yet I will rejoice. I will be joyful in God my what? Yeah. How long, O oh Lord, are you going to save? Are you going to save Two, I will wait patiently. God can handle your questions. He was totally fine with Habakkuk bringing them to him. But he makes the turn. He's like, okay, God, I'm gonna wait patiently. You're gonna do what you're gonna do in your time. And even if things are a mess, even if it's all shigging off, I will be joyful in God, my Savior, because you are a God who saves. You are a God who saves. Verse 19, the sovereign Lord, he's in control, not me, is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Ladies and gentlemen, deer pronking. Like, hey, Mr. Deer, do you not know about all the bad stuff that's going on? I feel like this is not a flattering angle. (laughs) Don't you know about all the stuff that's going on? Are you not paying attention to the news? I mean, like, why are you laughing and enjoying things? And Habakkuk says, no, I will rejoice in the sovereign Lord, the one that's in control. I Thank you. I will rejoice in God, my Savior, and he's going to make my feet like a deer. And not only that, he's going to put my feet, literally the highest hills, the mountains. I'm going to tread on the high, I'm going to be treading up there. Just like Moses was up there on the top of the mountain with his hands lifted up, I'm going to be up there with my hands lifted up. 
I'm going to rejoice because I know God's in control. He's got this, and he's got me. I was in the pits, and now I'm on the mountaintops, and I love this. He ends, um, if you're paying attention in your scripture, the very last line. So he's done with this prayer, but then he turns, and I love that it's actually in, it's in the scripture right there. He goes, uh, for the director of music on my stringed instruments, bust out the guitars, get, hand this off. We need to sing this song. We need to sing a song of worship. Um, Habakkuk's like, we need to go sing and declare this. We need to go sing um, that we trust in him. Uh, our trust in him is the song that we sing. Hope is the anthem of our hearts. Uh, we remember how good he is and how great he is. He is the God who saves. And even if the shelves are empty, even if the, the stock market crashes, even if I walk to the pump again, I'm like, are you kidding me? Whatever. You know what? The sovereign Lord is my strength and he's, he makes my feet like deer and I'm standing on a mountaintop and I'm going to rejoice because he is in control and not me. And he's going to do what he's going to do in his time, in his way. And I'm just going to trust him because that's how we live. Even though this is the same God who parted seas, this is the same God who made the sun stand still. This is the same God who raised Jesus from the dead. This is the same God we sing about all the time, that one. And his promises, he keeps them. He keeps his promises. I remember how good you are, God, and I'm bringing my prayers, I'm bringing my anxiety, and I'm bringing the worship back to you. I'm gonna keep my eyes there. Because the sovereign Lord is my strength. He's placed me up here, and he's given me feet like deer. And so what do we do? Ooh, child, things gonna get easier. <laughs> Bring it back. Um, yeah, we sing and we celebrate. We rejoice. That's what we do. And so in a moment, we're gonna sing and we're gonna celebrate and we're gonna rejoice. And we're not going to rush it this morning. We're going to take our time and worship and celebrate a really good God who is still good now, especially now and always. Um, before we do, uh, in a few moments, um, our ushers will bring by um, the baskets this morning. If you didn't get a chance to fill out a Connect card, if you can fill one of those out for us, we'd love to know how we can encourage you, how we can pray for you how we can support you. If you want to plug in, if you want to um, have questions about um, kids camp, you can stop by in the lobby afterwards or else mark that connect card because we'd love to get you connected there. Um, uh, this will also be our opportunity for those of us that call Grace City Home. This is our opportunity to give as well. And thank you for giving. We give joyfully and generously because we got an amazing, generous God. Um, and so thank you for doing that. Thanks for supporting what God does here. Uh, but with that, can I pray for you and then let's worship together. God, you are good. We don't always understand. God, I confess, it's never in my time and it's never my way, but you are a good God and you can be trusted. And right now, God, we declare together, we trust you. And God, I pray it wouldn't just be words, but that we live a life of trust, of a faithfulness. We'd be so full of faith that it would just it would shape every area of our life. That people would look and be confused by how much joy we have, but we sit with smile like a deer pronking around because you are the sovereign Lord. And you are a God who saves and you've saved us and you are saving us. And one day we trust that you will make all things right and all things new, that you are the God who is resurrecting, that you are the God of the resurrection and who is resurrecting me. That death doesn't get the final word. That you are a good God and you are a great God and we trust in you this morning. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Friends, we stand, we join us as we worship together.
God of Jacob, whose love in your so generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing Faithfulness on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lonely. I know. With you all things are possible I'm calling on the God of David Who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I've got my own giants Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness On your faithfulness Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you On your faithfulness, you're faithful, you're faithful. You heard your children, you hear your children. Now, oh, come on, you are the same. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were providing then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are. The Oh God, my God, I need you. 
church to sing this again. Oh, I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. He'll never let me down. And great is your faith. Well, let's pronk into praise and prayer this week. Whenever you feel threatened, whenever you feel concerned, whenever you feel afraid, whenever you feel like justice isn't served and you have to be the one that serves it, wait on the Lord and pronk in praise and prayer this week. We love you. Hey, before you head out, if you've got kiddos through kindergarten and thrift, fifth grade, you want to sign up for Kids Camp, do it now uh, before we get too packed that they can't be part of the extravagant awesomeness in August. Uh, but in the meantime, go and be the church with everything that you have right where you are right now. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday. What a powerful message. We hope that it impacted you in a life-changing way. In the meantime, you can go online at wearegrace.city and learn more about the church, next steps from baptism to Bibles. And we would love for you to join us here in person anytime on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. In the meantime, we hope that you continue to be the church right where you are with what you have right now. We'll see you next time.